Hi guys, Asmo here and today I have for you a bit of an update video. I'm gonna talk about the character progression, poisons concoction, answer some frequently asked questions. I'm gonna also talk about the what we're working on post by GGG and what I think about it. Then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the briefly about the league mechanic and also at the end I'm gonna give you a bunch of advice of what I think you should do if you're stuck in yellow maps, if you're stuck at whatever tier of maps you're stuck at, if you're stuck in terms of your character progression and don't know how to get upgrades, if you're not getting any currency, which mechanics you can run and what you can do to get yourself unstuck. It's actually very, very easy. Uh, people people are um, complaining about the drops not happening and it is true there's, there's like less drops in general in the game, but there are still a lot of different mechanics that you can do that still generate equal amount of drops to before and you just do those instead. Just do what actually gives you the rewards instead of trying to hammer your head against the wall and try to do stuff that is not giving you rewards. So I'm going to tell you which of the things actually are still very rewarding and I'm gonna make your progression much much easier but let's first talk about the character I'm gonna answer some questions that people are having uh, so currently level 92 I just woke up I had a good night of sleep and uh, I'm coming back I made some currency I got like six divines what are they right now they're like 120 something chaos I got like 300 chaos got a bunch of other currency I didn't really convert everything I had into the divines because it's very volatile market. I don't know if it's actually, wor if it's actually worth it. They were like 140 yesterday, so they're going up and down, whatever. But I just bought a bunch of stuff. I got enough currency to like get myself uh, comfortable to the point where I can do T16s uh, and all the uh, contracts and blueprints that I want. So I'm comfortable with this character. I could leave it at that and just keep making currency or I could upgrade it if I want. But the main things that people um, have been reporting that they've been struggling with was well, number one, mana, right? So until you get minus mana craft, so you can see I have two crafts for the minus mana cost, and that is enough to sustain my mana together with like a little bit um, of leech and uh, mana gain on hit, right? So that is something that is allowing me to do that without a flask. Before that, you want to use a flask. So the flask I was using was, there should be somewhere, um, Enduring Mana Flask, right? So I was using Enduring Divine Mana Flask. This was ever since I was doing uh, Infinite Heist, I made this flask and uh, just alt spamming, and that's what I was using. So you want to use an Enduring Mana Flask. Uh, if you want to reserve um, Grace and Determination and Herald of Agony, so you can do that. Um, and uh, afterwards you want to craft you know, either you get like three minus cost or you get like two minus cost and uh, also a jewel so i got here the replica conqueror's efficiency i bought it for like 20 c um, and it's minus nine to the uh, total of mana cost plus a little bit of extra skill duration but it uh, makes the mana cost much lower i also have a craft here from uh, one of the eater of worlds um, implicit for eight percent reduced mana reservation efficiency of skills this is very helpful um, and uh, there are a bunch of good ones that you can get uh, another good one is also like enemies uh, that you hit recently have like 100% reduced um, regeneration rate of life this really helps against like this like giga juiced essences that have massive regen so that's another good implicit to get and you want to get a bunch of these uh, like I bought a bunch of eater of worlds um, uh, fragments these these little currencies right because I needed them uh, for the boots anyway to craft right so what was my progression after the heist like first things that I did was get enough like accuracy and uh, life and resistances that was number one after that, I uh, tried to get like a decent amulet. So I got like an amulet that gave me some strength because you need a bunch of strength on this build. Accuracy so that I don't have to struggle with accuracy and I don't have to run precision as one of my auras and I don't have to run uh, war banner or anything like that. And I can fit just the defense and damage. Um, and then also uh, I can allocate the uh, anoint on it, the weathered hunter, which gives me some max res, so, so like so all re elemental res and also accuracy. So that's one of the first agrees that I did. Um, um, then I got a five link, then I got um, Amethyst uh, ring base uh, for Hunter ring and I just uh, essence spammed with whatever essences I had and until I got despair on it. So I got despair on hit, very important upgrade and that was around the time that I was also getting um, my whispers of doom so i was very uh, very quickly able to pick that up and i got now the curse and the mark set up um, and then after that was it was all about uh, getting the ailment immunity so i crafted the boots the way you craft the boots for ailment immunity you can see these boots are giving me 35 percent chance to avoid elemental ailments and then 20 percent chance to avoid elemental ailments on an implicit so 55 which is a huge amount the way you craft them is with this essence deafening essence of loathing so i bought like 10 of them and then third one hit the um, 
a little bit of a suppression roll and a little bit of life and had an empty prefix uh, and had 20% movement speed, 20% movement speed, of course I want more, but I'm shield charging, shield charging most of the time. So this is good for now, right? This is like a cheap pair of boots. I picked up the base for 2C and I basically spent like, I don't know, 10 to 20C uh, of, of worth of essences on, uh, on these boots, right? So that was a very, very easy craft. And then the expensive part of it actually, because I spent like, maybe like a hundred X worth of, uh, um, worth of these uh, Eldritch currencies on the implicits uh, just to get the 20% chance to avoid elemental ailments, right? If you get like a lower roll, if you get like 18%, right? Because you need to use the greater ones, they go up to 20. Uh, if you get like a roll of 18, you can simply re-roll it with blessed orbs, right? Because it's an implicit, so you can very easily um, min-max it to, uh, much easier than like having to roll with a divine, right? So this is um, how you craft these boots. The rest of my elemental ailment avoidance comes from uh, a shield, so you can get a 25 percent craft on a shield you can also have a craft on the chest and you also have 20 percent here from this so if you look at the defense tab i have 100 percent uh, ignite chill freeze and shock avoidance right so that's something very very important to get early on Another thing that people struggled with was um, perhaps strength requirement because before your gear is um, on, a, on a decent level, it's gonna be hard for you to also have enough strength on it to level a determination to max level, right? Where is my uh, determination in here? It's level 20 determination right now, right? You need 155 strength. It's very hard to get on this build without gear. So you need some gear, you prioritize strength on your amulet, you can get strength on jewelry, you can get strength on like uh, bases that are hybrid armor and evasion as well for all of your other gear uh, you can also get it on, uh, on jewels you can get it on the belt uh, what I did is something that someone in the stream suggested actually which was a very clever solution uh, to use inertia right so it costs you two so two passive skill points but you get a ton of um, strength right so every single dex note that I have in here is actually giving me a strength so there's a ton of strength I'm right now at 226 strength right because of that jewel um, so it's a massive amount and it helps a lot with with, uh, making sure that you can have shield charge max level, you can have spell totem max level, you can have determination max level, uh, you can have um, uh, Val Molten Shell, uh, all of that good stuff at as high level as you want. So that's another fix that you want to make early on before you have a better gear, before you have enough strength on your character. Another thing people had trouble with was respecking, right? So people made a big deal about the respecking and um, the fact that you have to pick this point instead of this point, right? That's basically mainly, mainly it, right? Instead of connecting through here, right? In, instead of, and, and going up to this, this portion, right? You simply put, take this node and now you're connected to this whole thing and you just walk around it. You can pick up the spell suppression. You can see my character right now has 100% spell suppression. So in terms of the defense, right? We got a little bit of block uh, because we're using a shield, of course, but we don't have any investment into that. We've got uh, cap resistances, positive chaos res. We got 100% spell suppression. Uh, we've got complete ailment immunity. Um, and... Uh, other than that, we just got Grace and Determination running, right? So Grace, Determination, uh, Val, Molten Shell, Molten Shell on cast when damage taken. Uh, those are the main defenses. And we got Flasks, Defensive Flask, Granite Flask, as well as a Jade Flask, which I don't have. Another uh, mod on, okay, Attack, uh, Damage, Leech, that's life, that's cool. Um, so that's basically it when it comes to like the early setup of the character. The next upgrade after the early ring and the ailment immunity boots would be a six link. So I bought a six link and I actually made currency on it because I split it. I bought like a non-split six link uh, assassin's garb. Uh, then I uh, split it. I crafted it with essences and I kept uh, the better one to myself and I sold the worse one and I actually made profit on that. Uh, I, st I still didn't unveil the Gravicious Craft. Uh, I have like some betrayal nodes and stuff picked up in order to uh, get the, these betrayal missions. So I need the Gravicious Craft instead of the physical damage reduction, but I got that temporarily. Um, oh, and also defensively we got Endurance Charges because we got Enduring Composure, right? Um, other than that... Uh, I could buy the Impossible Escape. It was like seven seven uh, divines, so I probably want to buy Impossible Escape, but and it's gonna free like fourteen passive skill points for me. But then I also need Int, uh, so I'm not sure how I'm gonna make up for that Int before getting gear. So I need to upgrade like a piece of gear to get a bunch of Int uh, in order to do that upgrade as well. Uh, but I can show a quick map 
just uh, running heist, running whatever this is like a, some T14 because that's what I have favored because Mesa is uh, very quick, just a very quick map to do and uh, simply picking up the smuggler's caches. There we go, we got a blueprint. Uh, I prefer sourcing my own contracts and blueprints uh, because then I get the good ones, right? Like people a lot of the time buy blueprints from other people, but when you buy them, you gotta, you're not gonna find a fully, re okay, there we go. You're not gonna find a fully revealed blueprint with seven currency rewards, right? It's like, you're just, you're just not gonna buy that from people because they're gonna run it themselves and then they're gonna sell you their garbage, right? Uh, unless someone really doesn't look, but like if you're buying like bulk, um, blueprints this is not something that people are gonna sell you so uh, it's definitely worth farming this yourself the harvest another uh, harvest the highest uh, craft on the map device is very much worth it uh, so i 100 percent recommend that if you want to run heist yourself instead of uh, picking up like just other people's trash and paying them for that on tft right so i prefer doing that of course if you're like low on contracts okay that's a very juicy essence Let's see if we can kill this or if it's, if it's gonna stomp me. Okay, we can kill it, but it's... Holy shit. Yeah, they are nerfing essences. I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. They are actually nerfing the amount of uh, bonus health they're getting per essence because this essence had like uh, seven different essences in it. So it's getting insane amount of HP and it's also Juggernaut. I don't know if that gives it... Uh, extra stuff but like so many um, essences on these just make them insanely tanky right so we're gonna fight this for an hour this is an uber essence fight the new uber essence encounter holy shit okay the one problem i have with uh, wither totems is the totem uh, dying pretty easily Okay, so we got a bunch of essences and that's basically how the build works, right? Uh, you just shield charge around, it's very good for heist as well. Uh, we got expedition, uh, but let's just talk about the changes that they're gonna be making to the game. So let me give you a quick comment on that, uh, what we're working on. Basically, arch nemesis, they're gonna be uh, nerfing them a little bit. They're gonna be nerfing like red beasts and essences and stuff like that because those are like, as you could as you could see, very very uh, tanky. Especially when it like already is a tanky mob like the bears that have tons of life normally. They have a bunch of regen. If you don't have a way to deal with reg regen, like through some eldritch implicit or something, uh, you can potentially struggle if you don't have enough DPS and they can just repeatedly kill you and make the experience very unfun because they're like so much harder than everything else, right? So the balancing of that is definitely something that they need to adjust and. They're acknowledging that this needs to be adjusted, so they're going to be doing some fixes. Probably not going to be still enough, but at least they're doing something with it, so that's good. Harvest, uh, they're going to be buffing early amount of like harvest stuff that you get. I still think that that is not enough and that harvest is still too weak, but uh, we'll see when people start juicing, because keep in mind that this is only like day two, day three, so people still are going to be figuring stuff out and figuring out like how to break the mechanics and... Uh, that's what people don't take uh, into account, right? Like normally at the beginning of the league, everybody cries and complains how everything is impossible. And then one week in, we discovered some broken stuff and, and we can abuse these mechanics to just get stupid amounts of uh, currency and stupid amounts of loot from them. So uh, this is something that has to be taken into account and, uh, and we'll see how it progresses from that. But they are going to be buffing it a little bit. So, okay, it's an adjustment in the right direction at least, right? Even if it's not enough. And then Lake of Coranda, Calandra, they're increasing rewards from the league and non-league encounter in the lake, especially in the higher tier maps. So probably like red maps and, and uh, higher difficulties. So that's good. That's another thing that definitely needs to be buffed. I think this was a big mistake to uh, release this so undertuned. And then another big mistake is also that if you look at like, did you see the league mechanic in the map, by the way? Because I didn't see it. Like, where is it? Let's see. Oh, alchemies. People apparently have trouble sustaining alchemies. I don't know, because I've been doing heists, so I had tons of alchemies. Uh, but where is the league mechanic, right? Uh, let me see. Did I notice it? Did I even notice it? Like, where? where is it? Where, where it's like so impossible to, to even see it, right? It's such a low impact. Like, the animation is so... Uh, it's so hidden. Like, it's so... Okay, more essences. Why did I not pick them up? The animation is like pretty much invisible. 
it's like you, you can't really see like this little dinky like tablet totem thing pops up and it's like look i can't even find this where is it is it with the in the boss room where is the leak mechanic oh there it is look it's so pitiful right like they need to gamify this a little bit so to speak right because like you don't want to make it too silly right you don't want like a giant chicken fly and drop it and squawk and fly away but you want to like you want to have an impact you want to have like you want it to pop when you like meet the league mechanic in your maps just so you don't feel like you're playing the vanilla game right this is a big mistake that i think like their design team makes they are not making leagues appealing to people right sentinel was the same mistake right sentinel actually turned out that people enjoyed uh, the league mechanic right because they just like fighting monsters and they were interacting with it while they were doing maps people really like that right people really like if they can interact with the league mechanic while they're doing a map that's why like the most popular best map best leagues like breach you interact with it in a map um what is delirium you interact with it in a map uh, sentinel you interact with it in a map right i really like scourge S scourge was a really really cool league because like you interact with it in the map and like the effect is super flashy and cool and i feel like you're like you're doing something this is like a little stone tablet raised being raised like it's it's so uh, like uninspired it's it's so like low impact you don't notice that right it should like smash from the sky on the ground and then the dust flies and you're like oh shit okay i found something right i found the league mechanic and instead it's like it's just like slow raising animation i think that's like a huge part of what contributes to people feeling like they're just playing standard instead of playing the league right i personally like you can see i've never interacted with the league mechanic i just watch other people do it they say it's unrewarding okay i'm gonna wait until they buff it right i'm not gonna do it i actually that's part of the reason why i didn't really struggle this league because i did the league mechanics that are rewarding so uh let's talk about that then right which league mechanics are rewarding what should you be doing if you want to actually make currency as you can see here number one is expedition right expedition is really really strong you can craft spell suppression gear which is in high demand you can make a bunch of currency uh doing expedition that's probably like number one mechanic number two league mechanic is gonna be heist heist is incredibly profitable you can see how, how much is like a fully revealed uh, blueprint uh, blueprint wings revealed three sixty chaos this is worth way more by the way you're gonna get way more uh, currency out of that than 60 chaos you're gonna get like two three divines out of that maybe depending on what you hit but like potential for more but like maybe like two divines uh, so so blueprints contracts all of that is super valuable stack decks are apparently are apparently really good and expedition sorry not expedition uh, well expedition is actually also a good way to farm them um actually yeah expedition and uh, heist are both like the two best league mechanics in the game to farm uh, stack decks uh, so that's another thing that's going to be uh, something that people are talking about like such low drop rates so people are going to want to get their items from like stack decks maybe stack decks will rise raise in price or maybe you're going to be able to get something from just uh, opening them right um, so that's another thing in terms of my atlas uh, skill tree it's very straightforward i started by going for uh, june missions that's number one thing i prioritize because i want to do betrayal right i want to get my own stuff from betrayal it's very very useful lots of quality of life available in there like all the quality on items quality on flasks that i need for my build um white sockets all that good stuff is available right or like actually did they change the white sockets um anyway there's tons of good stuff available there right and then we got expedition right expedition is very very valuable then i was running a stream of consciousness because that way i can block a bunch of mechanics i don't want so the only things i was running was um uh heist right so i got the fully revealed blueprints and more blueprints this is also a small node for more blueprints and this is a extra smugglers cache uh, percentage chance i got essences because essences early on a lot of people don't do them because they take a while but you can very easily like if you're stuck if you cannot progress to red maps right if you cannot do t16 maps what you do is you just go down to like yellow maps whatever tier is like you're comfortable in even even do like t i don't know like t9 maps or whatever right whatever your build can handle and just farm essences put essence on a map device it costs like two chaos and you're gonna get so many essences right like i don't have that many essences but you can get like you can get like a huge like a stupid amount of essences and then what you can do you can craft right buy cheap bases buy like uh, armor evasion bases 
and roll them with decent essences that will guarantee like one decent roll that someone will, someone will want. For, like look at the essence and find like okay what would be good on that right. So for example, what is what is like the best item that I can put lightning resistance or lightning damage on right. So number one, like if you want to upgrade it to higher tier for example, you could craft claws with that right. You could essence craft claws. You could craft LA bows. You could craft Stygian Vices, right? Because you're guaranteeing a resistance. Like I crafted this uh, like triple, big triple res Stygian Vice in, in a few essences, right? Because one is guaranteed, so I just need to hit two modifiers, right? Either a life and res or res and res, right? If you hit two modifiers, you, you have a decent item that you can sell and uh, sell it for more than the essences that you spent and more than the ba base that you bought, right? So you can just do that. You can just farm low tier maps you can just farm like t8 t9 maps t10 maps whatever uh, whatever low tier you can handle you can uh, do expedition just get your points first right just invest into the points first for the essences and for the um for the expedition get these points first that's what matters first and then you can go back down in tiers and you can do these essences you can do these expeditions craft a bunch of basic gear for people and you can make tons of currency like that right for example um like kobe uh, black mamba one of the players who's like the top 0.1 percent of players you know he's like one of the richest players one of the things he did was just craft claws early on right so he was just crafting claws with essences and stuff like that and uh, and he has a mage blood on on he had a mage blood on day two or something right so it's still profitable to craft with essences because as Essences are very very tanky. If you can farm them, you can sell them for a good profit as well. Like how much is like a shrieking essence of greed? It's like three chaos, right? If you buy in a bigger stock, it's probably gonna be more like four chaos, right? So picking up a bunch of these is gonna really really um, add up, and it's gonna make you currency. And then also run heist, right, on the map device. That's another thing you can do if you're not doing essences. If you want something easier, uh, just do heist, and you're gonna pick up a bunch of contracts, and you can run heist yourself or sell them to other people, but I think running heist is very very profitable and I have a heist guide spicy sushi has a really a good early heist guide uh, and if you're just starting do early heist right level 62 plus do heist like when I started the league for the first few hours uh, I farmed a bunch of divines actually found this is not the this is not the original six divines but I farmed six divines in a few hours uh, and then I had enough uh, currency to just move on you know and i bought the uh, bought the divines when they were costing like 40 chaos then i bought them when they were costing some 60 70 80 and then a couple days later they're worth 120 right so i made a bunch of currency by just doing um, infinite heist and then progress the maps and then when i caught up to the people who were in t16s I was at the same point in the atlas cannot progress the atlas any further right i can only do bosses which i'm not going to be doing until i upgrade my character further so right now i can just make do any currency strategy i can like just chain these like uh, red maps and farm um heist and them and do heist and just make a bunch of currency grabbing essences grabbing heist and grabbing expedition so that's what i'm doing that's how i'm making currency and you can do that at any tiers of maps you can literally if you're in white maps you can still do that right if you're in white maps and your character's like oh i cannot get the ailment immunity thing i cannot get uh, a six link i cannot get uh, a curse and hit ring you know i don't have the currency for that just farm essences and expedition in white maps and do heist if you want and you're gonna make uh, much more currency than trying to do like league mechanic trying to like juice your maps some other way right like all these other mechanics um all, all these other mechanics are like not really that worth it right like i heard that legion is really good as well so legion is something that you might also look into if your character is good at doing that uh, if you have really good clear um especially if people are if you're using like inspired learnings uh, inspired learnings uh, are not good outside of that right because legion still is like one of the main sources of rare monsters so uh farming legion is pretty good because a lot of rare monsters are also gonna have the arch nemesis modifiers which are gonna give the crazy loot i'm gonna show on the screen as uh, a screenshot of basically maps i picked up from one monster i literally killed one monster in a map it was like a t14 grotto or something like that um and it dropped 34 maps one monster right so you have a bunch of them that drop like flasks or they drop um or are these right scraps and whetstones right so you're gonna have a uh, five billion of them then you have to remove them from your filter um 
so they just sometimes drop like random bullshit like that but there are ones that drop maps there are ones that drop scarabs there are ones that drop higher currencies so there's definitely a lot of currency to be made if you just do the right league mechanics instead of just sticking to to stuff that is not rewarding right uh, so that's basically it hopefully this is helpful to you guys thank you so much for watching and see you next time